Hi, this is Paul from Pedry Education. In today's video, I'd like to talk about ethics of care and education, which is an essential requirement for effective 21st century education. While ethics of care has been discussed by others in other YouTube videos, those videos are presented in more of a theoretical way, whereas I'd like to focus more on the level of application and pragmatics. Nevertheless, I will link some videos that I like about this topic in the description below. As the name suggests, ethics of care is not only about ethics, but also about care. Ordinarily, scholars of ethics of care talk about the carer and the cared for. However, for the purposes of this video about the application of ethics of care in schools, I'm going to refer to the teachers and school staff as the carers and the students as the cared for. One of the key requirements in education is for students to have a positive association between themselves and their school. In other words, to feel that they truly belong at the school. Without this, students won't want to come to school. And even when they are in school, they will do everything possible to escape from it, getting in trouble, using their devices during class, or simply daydreaming. Part of the challenge achieving the goal of having students want to be at school is to have a positive connection between the school staff and the students. In reality, there's often a disconnect between teachers and students, particularly in high schools. This is partly because high school teachers come into contact with far more students than an elementary school teacher, so they have very little knowledge of their students. However, it's also because high school teachers may not see their job as requiring any sort of care for students. Too often we see and hear of teachers who expect students to care, to care about the school, to care about their classwork, to care about themselves, to care about their peers and so on, and yet the students may feel that they same teachers do not care about them. Think about it this way, if you think that your students hate you, wouldn't you start to feel the same way about your students? Also consider how you treat each of your students and recognize that you do treat the students that you like differently from those that annoy you. In Ethics of Care, the argument is that it isn't enough for teachers to know that they have a duty or a moral obligation to care for their students. Instead, teachers should have an empathetic care for each and every student. What is the difference between these two things? Well, firstly, it's about the nature of relationships. Relationships are two-way and involve both people having a role in that relationship. The student plays the role of the cared for. Traditionally, ethics in schools is only ever conceived of the teacher having any role in care, with students being absent from the discussion. Ethics of care changes all of that. Secondly, ethics of care is different in terms of the outcome. If you only feel a moral duty to care for your students, your students will know this. That moral duty of care is what many students experience in school because teachers may like only a handful of their students. Such students know that they aren't one of the teacher's pets, so any act of care is born out of moral obligation rather than genuine care. They'll hear your words, but they won't feel cared for. True care requires not only having teachers genuinely care for their students in an empathetic way, but also students acknowledging that they feel cared for, which can be challenging to achieve. You can feel like you've said and done some great things for your students, but not realize that they don't actually feel like you really care. And without this, your students won't trust you, open up to you, or truly listen to your advice. Likewise, unless you take the time to listen to your students, your actions and words may not be what your students want from you. So how do you achieve this? A key requirement is to treat every student as if they are great kids. In order for this to happen, it will involve some mental trickery. You may have some real terrors in your class. However, you need to find positive qualities about all of your students that you can focus on so that your actions and words of care are sincere. You are acting with kindness because you want to, not because you have to. The ability to listen to students also involves what is known as motivational displacement which is putting your needs to one side momentarily in order to put another person's first. This is also an extremely challenging task for teachers because they're incredibly busy. It is, however, necessary to make time, however short that time may be. How do you know if your students accept your care? Consider the reason why you're talking to your students in the first place. In our own school, our students can often feel overwhelmed by working in groups doing research, doing public speaking or trying new foods, among many other challenges accompanying our holistic educational approach. 
If our students listen to our advice, try new foods, make an effort to work more effectively with each other, and so on, it means that they have acknowledged that we care about them. I should say at this point that I became aware of ethics of care through the work of Nell Noddins, an American feminist, educationalist, and philosopher. While ethics of care first became known through the work of Carol Gilligan, Nell Noddins has been instrumental in bringing ethics of care into the realm of education, and I have recently become a strong advocate of ethics of care. Compared with other topics discussed in my video series, ethics of care is easily the newest and most challenging one for me. It is also a topic that I have some criticisms of. In a lecture given by Nell Noddins, she discusses the need for teachers to truly listen to students so that teachers are acting on expressed needs rather than on perceived needs. I can understand her advice in the context of student-centered learning, project-based learning, and other constructivist approaches, as it's important for students to feel empowered and to play an active role in their education. However, I feel that Noddings takes this to an extreme in which the students should dictate the curriculum and lesson content. To this, I have to disagree. Firstly, teachers at our school choose lesson content based partly on the provincial curriculum, which is mandated and also on the needs of the entire class as a whole. One child's specific needs cannot dictate what every other child should do, and only the teacher is in a position to know what the whole class needs. Secondly, a child isn't necessarily qualified to know what is best for themselves. Most are still struggling to act on logic rather than irrational impulses, and they have such limited life experience that they're gonna work within a very tiny comfort zone. Growth involves being taken out of your comfort zone, and that almost always involves another person, such as a teacher. Take food, for example. I've heard far too many parents say that they let their four or five-year-old child decide what they should eat and what they should wear. What four or five-year-old has enough knowledge or life experience to make a sensible decision about food and clothing? Even teenagers in our neighborhood seem incapable of doing this. They wear t-shirts and shorts in the winter, and they buy fast food for lunch. A more extreme example would involve domestic abuse. If a child reports that they are the victims of abuse, they may say that they need you to keep this a secret. However, a teacher has a legal duty to report such information to the police, and it's in the student's best interest for you to do so, whether or not they see it that way. A teacher must combine ethics of care with expertise and life experience to do what is best for the child, even if that action isn't necessarily what the kids say they want. That's about all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more upcoming videos about 21st century education, please click the subscribe button. Thanks again and see you all soon.